Florida red bay trees are dying at an alarming rate. They are being attacked by a recently introduced dangerous duo, a symbiotic plant pest and disease. One half of the pair is a tiny non-native insect, the red bay ambrosia beetle, Xyliberus glabratus. The second half is a disease called laurel wilt that is caused by a fungus, Raphaelia lauricula, which the beetle carries. Symptoms include small holes in the bark, dieback of tree branches, dark sapwood discoloration and streaking. In dry conditions, the beetles leave strings of sawdust from their wood boring activity. Unfortunately, there are other host trees susceptible to laurel wilt, including swamp bays, sassafras, pond spice, and one of Florida's most highly prized fruit trees, the avocado. Beetles carrying the fungus bore into wood, depositing the fungus, which infects the sapwood of host trees, restricting the flow of water, causing the leaves to wilt and the trees to die. The red bay ambrosia beetle was first detected in the U.S. near Savannah, Georgia in 2002. Soon after, laurel wilt was identified as the cause of high levels of mortality in red bay trees in South Carolina and Georgia. It was found in Duval County, Florida in 2005 with the same unfortunate result. Beetles harboring the fungus that causes laurel wilt likely arrived in Florida in wood brought from another state. Since its U.S. discovery, the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services and our federal partners, the USDA, have been surveying for signs of the disease. For the past few years, the Cooperative Agricultural Pest Survey, or CAPS program, has been running traps in eight Florida counties from Pensacola to Miami. More recently, as the disease moved closer to Florida's avocado industry, heightened survey efforts have been underway. Florida Agricultural Statistics reports the avocado industry represents a production value of close to $13 million annually, with over 6,500 production acres in Miami-Dade County and a small amount of acreage in Collier County. My father bought this grove in the early or mid-1960s. It was a mature grove at that time. So the trees, most of them are probably 50 years old or more. And, and Mike, was this the first place that you saw symptoms or suspect symptoms of laurel wilt, or was it another grove? Trevor, actually it was another grove, but after, after that, and this thing being on our radar screen like it is now, we started surveying all the groves, and this is just one of the places we found what we felt was a suspect tree. Okay. You know, we're, we're looking at our groves, and one of the concerns we have is, is that, as growers, is that this isn't going to affect my trees as a commercial grower only. It's going to affect dooryard trees, wild trees, and I think one of the keys to being able to early detect and possibly control this is going to be to get homeowners on board, get them educated in what to look for and what action they can take to help prevent the spread of this beetle. Right. Uh, and that, that's, that's going to be, I think, a, a real key issue in this entire program. Dooryard avocado trees are also abundant throughout Central and South Florida, and some reports claim they make up 10% of the tree canopy in Miami-Dade County. Recognizing the serious consequences Laurel Wilt could have on Florida avocados, the department assembled a working group of agricultural agencies, industry members, and local agriculture groups to establish effective management strategies to mitigate potential impacts. This group continues to plan and implement research, regulatory, and outreach efforts. A multi-agency systematic survey for the Red Bay Ambrosia Beetle and Laurel Wilt is underway in the commercial avocado groves of Miami-Dade County. The CAPS team has surveyed the majority of the groves and placed 18 additional traps throughout the county. Needless to say, the industry is concerned about the proximity of this disease to their groves. Is this something you use to uh, help your operators in, in picking out yeah, uh, we've given suspicious them to trees? Every uh, operator we got driving a tractor up and down the field, they're going to see more trees than we will in a day's time. 
Uh, so these are pictures we've taken of digital uh, digital camera made prints for everybody. Okay. And it's worked fairly well so far. They found several suspect trees and called them into us. We've gone out to check them. And this and is the same thing as this tree here. We've told them if they see the symptoms, come up and look at the trunk closely, and they'll see. So if they really see obvious signs of boring, wilting branches or or brown leaves, to just take a closer look and, mm -hmm. and then look for these sawdust toothpicks. Mm -hmm. Are you providing that to other grove owners that grow for you, yes. or that, that yes. as well? As well so as your the is, uh, competition, actually. We've, we've given them to everybody. This is something that's going to affect us all, so the more people that know about it, obviously, the better it is for all of us. And all your picking contractors and all those? Everybody. And we've had some of the pickers call us up and say, come out here and take a look at it. They could see them boring, signs of boring, right there while they were picking in the grove. They get that's closest to the tree. see the sawdust picking that's right great. out of the borehole, too. But uh, it's worked pretty well. We've had a lot of trees identified through that. So Fantastic. Pathologists and entomologists are uncertain of how the beetle and the disease will react in avocado. In the few dooryard avocados where it has been identified, the disease has caused the sudden decline of the trees. As samples come in, scientists are running the full array of tests to analyze the many organisms emerging, including a variety of fungal pathogens and insects. This is a collaborative effort between state, federal, and university scientists. Effective public outreach, vigilant survey and trapping efforts, and continued vigorous research are the keys to managing this challenging pest disease complex. In the meantime, the University of Florida's Institute of Food and Agriculture Sciences has prepared control strategies for commercial and urban avocado growers. So how do you know um, the difference between, um, say, a tree that has been struck by lightning and, and the wilt? Yeah, actually it's turned out to be a lot more complicated to be able to walk up to a tree and say, this is a wilt disease, or this is lightning, or this is root rot. So we're building a matrix of different types of symptoms that an avocado tree may show in reaction to either an insect attack or a fungal attack or a root disease or a freezing event or flooding so that we can start to eliminate all these different symptoms that come with these different stresses whether they're environmental or caused by uh, a disease or an insect so that we can start to focus in okay here's what some here's what a tree looks like when it's being attacked by a fungus that causes a wilt disease versus here's what a tree looks like after a freeze six months later Florida is in the process of developing regulatory rules to limit the movement of firewood and other unprocessed wood products into and within the state. The public can also help prevent the spread of red bay ambrosia beetle and laurel wilt by following these simple suggestions. Become familiar with the signs of laurel wilt disease and red bay ambrosia beetle and be on the lookout for evidence of the pest or disease on your trees. Use local firewood only. Do not transport firewood from other states because destructive pests and diseases can hitchhike into Florida on infested firewood. Do not transport host trees unless purchased from a registered nursery. Do not move unprocessed wood products including mulch and solid wood packing material. Wood destroying insects could be present. If you are a woodworker, be sure you know the origin of your materials. They could be carrying harmful pests and diseases. If your tree dies, contact your local county extension office for recommended methods of disposal. And be sure to check out the SaveTheGuac.com website. If you suspect your trees may be infected with laurel wilt or you think you have found a red bay ambrosia beetle, Visit www.fl-dpi.com to view photographs of the pest and disease, or contact the DPI helpline at 888-397-1517. Slowing the spread of lower wilt is the overall goal. Ultimately, the solutions arrived at to mitigate its impact will be science-based from the research currently underway.